Hey guys, welcome to Kachi Vachi. Today we are joining you from the studio of Quilting Dreams for You, and we are going to be going over long arming basics. So this is the beginner, easiest edge to edge that you can possibly do on a pro stitcher. If you have a long arm or are considering a long arm and you're considering pro stitcher, that's the computerized quilting system, this is the absolute very first place you would wanna start is doing an edge to edge design. So today I'm going to be using Pro Stitcher, which is a system that is by and away, hands down, my favorite computerized quilting system. There are definitely others out there on the market. I find this to be both the most powerful and user friendly. So you can get easier ones that aren't as powerful and you can get harder ones that aren't as user friendly. This is that perfect sweet spot in between and hands down, it is my favorite. I've been quilting for a decade, done hundreds and hundreds of different quilts, and this is by and away my favorite system. We are also using the Baby Lock Regalia. So that is a 20 inch throat space. Nice because everything is contained. All of your cables are enclosed into it so you don't have anything riding on the top. I really love that the Pro Stitcher integrates with them that way. Super, super comparable to the HQ Amara as well. So if you are interested in or have either of those systems, everything that we're doing today would be super applicable to you. Everything in the Pro Stitcher is going to be applicable to anyone who has the Pro Stitcher premium system. So the Pro Stitcher is super, super awesome because you get very precise quilting from day one. You don't have any learning curve as far as the actual stitching. It's all just computer and you can instantly start a business that way, which is really great. The other pro is you get hands-free quilting, which is great for moms or great for anyone who wants to do some piecing simultaneously. Well, there's a baby right there. I'm mom and hardcore right now, so we get to program this system so while her quilt is quilting, we will also get to do some mom chores. Alrighty guys, so we are going to start by programming our entire quilt. I personally like having a grid on, so that is just something that's entirely personal preference. It is this icon over here on the left of your screen. To me, that gives me a just visual reference point of approximately how large my design is and how big of an area I'm working with. So every box is one inch and you can go from there. I have my USB in my machine with my design loaded onto it. So before you get anywhere, that's going to be the very first place you'd want to start. And that's just making sure you have your quilt file on hand. I'm going to go to the top of my screen now and select area. Then I will select to corner. When I click to corner it is marking an area point. So I want to make sure that I have my machine at the top left corner or the bottom left corner, whatever you prefer. You want to have your quilt machine overhanging the actual quilt as much as you can, roughly. So on a baby quilt that's like 36 by 40, you can get within a half inch inch of the edge of the quilt. The bigger the quilt, the more I'm going to prefer having my design overhang. And that's because if my quilt is not 100% perfectly square, if it shifts to the left or shifts to the right because it grows in one direction or the other, then it's still going to be 100% quilted without my start or end point ending up somewhere an inch or so inside the edge of my quilt, which is just an unpleasant thing to happen. It's not the end of the world. It's not the most unsightly thing that will ever happen to a quilt, but it's something that's avoidable by simply programming your design to run over the edge of your quilt. So I have my design overhanging here and I'm going to hit to corner. Then you will move to the bottom right of your quilt and hit to corner a second time. Once I've done two corner, that is giving me the width that I'm going to program my quilting design to be. So that is not necessarily the width of your quilt. That is the width of the design. And it's really, it could be the height of your quilt. So I have my quilt 
loaded on this frame horizontally, which means this is actually the full length of my quilt is my width. And then the height is going to change no matter what. So right now when you did two corner and you went from the top of your quilt to the bottom of where your quilting machine could reach, that's just a generic number. That's how much quiltable space you have for this very first row. We want to come over to the right of our screen here and where it says height, we're going to change that number manually. So if you click into that box, it's going to pop up with a keypad and you will type in whatever the height or length of your quilt will be. So my quilt is loaded on this frame horizontally. So I'm actually going to be programming the width of my quilt. My quilt measures 77 inches. So I will put 77 inches into that and then close that box just by hitting the enter. Once you have that, so you should be able to see two numbers in these boxes, your width and your height, and it's gonna have a four point count. That is the overall size of your entire quilt is what you want with a little bit extra on that width to allow for some grace if your quilt isn't perfectly square. The height just by nature has extra grace built into it because as you quilt, your quilt is going to draw up. That draw reduces the size of your quilt. So even though I'm putting 77 inches now, as it progresses and quilts each of those rows, it's going to shrink up my quilt little by little, and I'll probably still end up having to crop off the bottom row because it's going to program beyond where my actual quilt is and it would waste fabric thread and time to quilt that area so we'll just crop it off that is an entirely different process which we have walked out for you in another video that we have linked below there is no way that i know of to accurately program so that your design is going to end perfectly within your quilt or perfectly at the end of the row every single time without fail because depending on the density in which you quilt it depending on the density of the design that you're quilting it's going to have different percentages of draw and I have not found a formula that is accurate that I can appropriately guess how much my quilt is going to draw up in order to be able to program that number here and now is much, much easier in my estimation to end up having the actual size of my quilt programmed in. And then if you need to crop it, you can. If you don't have to, then you don't have to, and that's nice. So once I have my width and my height programmed here, I'm going to go back to the top of my screen and there's tabs. I want to go to the tab all the way to the left that says file and then design and open. So I'm opening from a USB. So I have lots of USBs plugged in here, but you will choose whichever USB has the design that you are wanting. So mine is on my J file. I have my design sorted into blocks, borders, continuous lines, continuous lines being more like sashings and such like that. And then edge to edge is where my design for today is and they're alphabetically organized and it is Gideon leaves so when you select the design it's going to turn black or blue or purple depending on which version tablet you have but once you have it selected you will then hit open and it's going to put that design on your screen if you cannot see the whole area of your quilt and your quilt design simultaneously, then if you come down to the bottom right of your screen, there's a little house button. If you click that, that's going to bring everything that is on your screen into view for you. I use that button all the time. So from here, I have a purple box, which indicates the area of my quilt that I marked out. I have a blue box, that indicates the area of the design that I have. And then I have green lines. You probably have orange lines. Those orange lines are going to be the crosshairs of where your quilting machine is located. 
from here. I will go back to the top tabs to modify. I will go to align and then I'm going to go over to the right and now I have a few different boxes here to work with. So I'm going to work within the horizontal box and click left and that's going to align my design to the left of my area and then I'm going to come down to vertical and top and that's going to align my design to the top of my area. So if you look back at the area of your quilt you will now see that your design has been popped into place and it is at the top left of your quilt area. I'm just going to hit the home button because that zooms it in just a little bit more which makes it easier for me to see. Once I have done that I from here could go to resize. Whatever size your design loads at when you initially bring it onto your screen is the quote ideal size to quilt it at. You absolutely can increase or decrease the size of those designs. Sometimes depending on how the designer like programmed the stitches they can look better larger or smaller or if you go smaller it can look more distorted and it's not as smooth or if you go larger it's more distorted and it's not as smooth. I tend to stay relatively close to wherever it was initially programmed at. If you need your design larger to fit within your quiltable area or smaller to fit within your quiltable area, absolutely do what you need to do. If you're going to resize it though, I would highly recommend you click this button on the right here. So when I'm in resize and I'm going to increase the size or decrease the size of my individual row here to fit within my quiltable area, I will hit this lock button. And what that's going to do is increase proportionally. So if I come down to the bottom and hit the plus to resize it and make my design larger, it's going to make the width larger at the same proportion as the height. Whereas if I don't have lock on and I increase right now at selected height, it's going to increase just the height. And then I'm going to have to guess how wide I need to make it to keep it from looking distorted. That to me is not an ideal way of quilting. So I always lock that aspect ratio before I resize anything just because it makes it easier. And I know that those proportions are going to like suit one another. Not only because it makes it easier, but because I know those proportions are going to be the best suited to that design. I can also check the height. So right now my individual row height is at 11.37 inches. And that's just from the top of my design to the bottom of my design is about 11 and a half inches. I have 20 inches of throat space. That's more than enough. I don't need to increase or decrease that's going to suit me just fine. If anything, I would probably want it to be on the slightly smaller side for this bed quilt, just because I know it's for a two year old and it's going to get lots of use and lots of wear. Once you have the design populating at the top left corner of your area and you have it at the size roughly that you would want it to be at, you will then come back to the very top tabs to repeat. I will select repeat and then I'm going to go back over to the right now. So it's a constant toggle between the very top of your screen and the right. And those are going to be something that come with time and patience. You'll get more and more used to looking between those two. Sometimes there's navigation bars at the top and that's all you need but most often it's going to be a little bit of both. So I'm at repeat and the very first thing I'm going to do is hit fill. And what that does is it automatically fills my whole area with as many of my designs as it thinks it can fit within that quiltable area. So it's saying 
I have six rows and then I can click horizontal over here on the right and it's going to tell me six repeats horizontally as well. I will hit stretch and that's going to stretch it horizontally and then I'm going to click vertical here and hit stretch again and that's going to stretch it vertically and that's going to make my design actually fill that quilt area. If you do not hit stretch, so if I do undo actually, then you can see, and we'll undo both, you can see this blue line is again the area of my design. The purple line here is the area of my quilt. I would have gap all the way around my quilt if I do not stretch. So you can manually repeat it. If I manually repeat it, you will see that now my blue line hangs outside of that quiltable area. And we can actually stretch that and that would make my quilting a little bit more dense. I'll go horizontal and you can add that row and that's gonna get you a little bit closer to where you'd wanna be. So then when you hit stretch, it's not stretching it quite as much. So that's gonna be a little bit more accurate to that initial size of the design. So you'll potentially end up with smoother or cleaner lines because there it's stretching it, but it's stretching it, kind of shrinking it only by like about an inch. Whereas if I didn't have that repeat, it was gonna be stretching it probably closer to, let's see, no repeat, oopsie daisy, let's not stretch. Let's see where we were at. Yeah, so each of these boxes, one, two, three, is about an inch. So it would be stretching it about 12 inches, which is less than ideal. So for me, adding a horizontal repeat there means it's gonna shrink it by about two inches. So it's gonna shrink it by about an inch on the left and shrink it by about an inch on the right. And that definitely has less distortion than increasing by stretching about 12 inches. So once I have stretch selected on my horizontal and my vertical, as long as you're satisfied with the overall size. So if I come and look at my rows here, I'm looking at about 12 inches. So 10 inches is here. The bottom of this row is where my start point is. And oops, I just moved it. And so that's right at 12 inches. To me, I'm perfectly satisfied with that. I don't think my leaves look distorted or the curls are like stretched weird in any way, I am quite satisfied with that. If you want to play with it and add more repeats or add more um, horizontal or vertical repeats to get it to your liking, you can absolutely do that. So right now we've done quite a few steps. We've marked an area and repeated designs and stretched it. So I want to flatten all of this so that it's less things for my computer to have to read. So the next step is coming over here to the left. There is an icon that looks like a pin in a piece of fabric to me, and that is your baseline. And so that's going to flatten all of those layers. So once you do this, it's not gonna allow you to repeat or stretch or anything like that anymore. It's going to make all those things gray out, but it's gonna be a file that is much easier for your computer to process and read through as you quilt. So I will hit baseline. You see all of those little black dots that indicated the start point of each design disappeared and it has flattened that into one smooth continuous row. And I will then now proceed to the top left tab that says file and then save. I save my selected design and I have a folder created just for work in progress. So that is WIP. And that is anything that I'm currently working on. It's going to be saved to that file. And every month or so, I'll clean it out. But WIP is where I like to save. And that way, it's not overriding my initial design. 
and then I'm going to click this text at the bottom and that's going to allow me to rename it. So you can hit clear or you can come up and select just what you want to delete. So I can leave it as a border to border because that's what it is. And let's rename this Franz Twin Quilt. If you use a number system for your quilts or name system, you can do like first and last name of your customer or if it's quilt number one, quilt number two, quilt number 100, whatever it may be. And then you will hit save. That single step alone is probably the most important of everything that we've done. If you do not save your design at this size and you quilt one to two rows and then your power goes out or there's a storm or you trip on the cord or the dog trips on the cord or there's a random glitch and it just restarts, this allows you to re-pull up your design at that exact dimension. Because if you've quilted two rows and even though you never planned to stop quilting, something one day potentially will happen that makes it just restart and you have no way to get back to those exact sizes unless you have saved it. It is a hundred percent worth the 10 seconds it takes to save that design. It'll I can't save your butt. It'll save your butt. I can't tell you how many times it has saved my butt having saved that design. It is by and away, if you do nothing else, make yourself a giant sign on the wall that says save your design until you have that emblazoned into your processes and it is second nature to save it because you do not want to be stuck without that when you need it. And that's that. So once I have my design saved at the size and dimensions that I want to quilt it at, I will come to Pro Stitcher and run. You can check through and verify your settings. It's always a good thing to do. My number one thing that I forget to do is take it off of basting. So uh, when I'm stitching around the perimeter of my quilt, which I do every single row because I do program it over the edge of my quilt, I will come and select baste and just tack that down each row. And I can't tell me, it's like at least once every quilt, if not more. I forget to unclick baste and I'll go hit run and it's going to stitch it at like a fourth of the stitch, which nobody wants on their actual quilting. So you can see it's a good habit to just eyeball that because I can't tell you how many times I've had to just rip out basting stitches because I didn't eyeball that. So checking through your settings, it's great that it pops up. I really appreciate that. It does catch me at least half the time when I do actually verify my settings as it says that I should. One thing I would also probably do is turn down my speed percent. I don't recommend quilting at 100% on a simulation on your computer, sure, but personally I quilt around 80% and yeah that just makes me feel more comfortable. I don't like driving around curves on curvy roads at 100 miles an hour, and I don't like driving around curves on my quilting machine at 100%. It's kind of the same thing. I'm from very flat, straight roaded state, and so those super fast speed sounds that it makes when it goes around curves at very high speeds, make me uncomfortable in the same sense that I don't like to go more than 45 miles an hour around curves. And that's just the way that I live my life and I'm perfectly okay with it. If you like to quilt at 100%, you are 100% welcome to do so. I stick to around 80. If you want different stitches per inch, you can absolutely change that. This is the time before you start your quilt. I default to 12. It gives me nice smooth curves, sharp points and it's not too dense for me. And then from there, you will hit proceed. It's going to slowly move your machine to your start point. And then depending on what settings you have selected, you'll pull your thread up and begin your row. And as it stitches, it will turn where it has stitched. 
yellow on the screen until you move your screen. So that yellow line will only appear there that yellow line will only appear there until you actually progress and then each row it's going to disappear. But one thing it's nice it gives you an approximate of where you're at and sometimes you don't know like the direction that it's quilted so this allows you to see that visually which is a nice thing certainly doesn't hurt anything that it does it I don't know how much or how beneficial it really is but it's not not helpful so one other thing that I like to do once I start my very first row is set a timer just because I will be able to predict approximately how long it has taken me to quilt my whole quilt or how long it's going to take me to quilt my whole quilt. So if you start your timer when this row starts, then because we've programmed our entire quilt, we're able to see about how long it's going to take from beginning to end. So if this first row takes 20 minutes and I have seven rows, I know I'm looking at at least two and a half hours of quilting. Once you add in bobbin winding and threads breaking from like you're running out of bobbin thread or whatnot and then just advancing your quilt, we're probably looking at closer to three hours or so for this quilt. And we can know that from the very onset, which is a very nice thing. So if you have a dinner or you've got something in the oven, you can know that about halfway through you'll have to stop and go check on it. or oh, I'll be able to get this whole thing done before I go out tonight or whatever it may be. I know y'all have to be super partiers going out like crazy here. Subscribe and stuff, guys. If you want to see more content like this, we absolutely would love to be able to put that together for you and your subscribes help immensely in that process. And we're gonna swap back to the studio here in just a minute so that you can see how to advance to the next row. So once your first row of quilting has completed and your machine is at the end of that very first row, you're going to hit the cancel button on your screen and then you're going to pull up and trim your thread and then we're going to unclamp each side of our quilt and roll our quilt forward. So as you roll, you want to make sure that you can still access the start point of this first row. If you can access the start point or the end point, they're gonna be at the same plane, then you know that you'll be able to program your machine to be able to have the exact same spacing between each of your rows. And so starting with an edge to edge design where the start point is at the very bottom of your design is paramount when it comes to beginning edge to edge quilting going to be absolutely the easiest way to go about it. I would highly, highly, highly recommend for your start point to be at the bottom of the design when you begin. Once you have advanced your quilt, I would reclamp the sides and base down your edges and then you're going to move your crosshairs or move your needle to the start point of your previous row. Once you have your machine at the start point of your previous row, so in real life, on your actual quilt, you will have your needle in the position of the start point of the row that was already quilted, that's rolled up. You're going to come to the top modify tab. Underneath that tab at the top, there is an icon that says reposition. You will click reposition. And then you will go to the right of your screen and there is an icon that says start point. When you click start point, it is going to advance your quilt up and move that start point and move the whole design up on your screen. So it freaks a lot of people out because that blue is now above the area that you marked. So that blue area marking your design is above the purple area, which marks where your quilt was located. That is exactly what you want, even though it looks like it's gonna be quilting in a weird place. So now that we have our quilt advanced forward, we want to double check and make sure that our design fits within our quiltable area. So I'm gonna move my machine to the top 
of the row that I want to quilt next, which would be the top of this leaf here. And then I'm going to move the quilting machine to the bottom and make sure that I can still access my start point as well. If your quilt fits or if your design, once you've rolled forward, fits within that quiltable area, then we would progress forward. If it doesn't, if you find that you can't reach the start point, you'll have to roll your quilt a little bit further up so that you can access that start point. Once you've made sure that your design fits within your quiltable area, you're going to come to the top tab that says Pro Stitcher. Underneath that, you will click the new start and end icon. And then you're going to navigate to the right side of your screen. And you have two columns here. One says start, one says end. Under the start column, you will come down to the bottom where it says jumps and there is an arrow down. You will hit that arrow and that is going to jump you to the start point of the next row. That is exactly what you want because we want to quilt this next row of our quilt. And from there, you would hit run, double check and make sure you turned off based and that your stitches per inch are where you want them. And from there, you will hit proceed and that will then quilt your second row of the quilt. So you will repeat this process for all of the subsequent rows until you get to the very last row of your quilt. And that's it, you guys. We have successfully quilted a semi-dense edge to edge in the easiest way possible. If you are interested in finding out how to crop the very last row, check out our video. We will go through the details of that and it make it super simple and you'll absolutely be able to finish your quilt in that way. If you are just getting into this wonderful world of quilting and you are looking for someone to do your long arming, we would absolutely recommend Quilting Dreams for you. We have their contact information listed below. They would be so happy to do a beautiful job quilting for you. We absolutely appreciate the use of their studio and hope that maybe one day we'll see one of your quilts on their frame. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Subscribe if you haven't, that helps us out so much. Hit the like button, hit the bell button so you'll see any notifications of new videos that we release.